Hello everyone, this is Gautam and Associate Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Vidya Vardhika College of Engineering, Mysuru. So let's begin with Module 2 of Transmission and Distribution. Hope you all have studied concepts pertaining to overhead line insulators, type of supporting structures, and concept of SAG and its calculations, and the structure of uh, electric power system, flow diagrams of transmission and distribution in module one. So with that introduction, so let's begin with module two, that is transmission line parameters. The learning objectives of this session are, at the end of the session, you'll be able to know the importance of line parameters. So that is how would line uh, parameter affect the performance of the transmission line and how to represent line parameters and also how to determine the inductance of a homogeneous solid conductor. So at last, you will be able to know the effect of RLC on, on the performance of the transmission line. So let's begin with the introduction to line parameters. You all know the use of transmission lines and you all have seen transmission lines whenever you travel or whenever you come out. The main objective or main use of transmission lines are they act as a carrier from the generating station to the load center or to the distribution units. And these transmission lines are modeled using line parameters. The line parameters are nothing but resistance, inductance, capacitance, and shunt conductance. So transmission line is also represented using these parameters, using these four line parameters. And the line impedance consists of resistance and inductance in series with the line. And admittance of the line usually consists of capacitance and conductance, which are connected in shunt. So why are these, why is this, you just imagine a normal conductor. When the current starts flowing through a conductor, you will get a resistance. So that resistance is will be in series with the line. And again, the same, when the same current starts flowing through the line, there will also be an inductance because flow of current will also give rise to magnetic field. And this magnetic field will hence give rise to the inductance. So as a result, both resistance and inductance will be in series with the line. And the other two parameters, that is capacitance and conductance, will be in connected in shunt. This is a representation of single phase transmission line using line parameters, as already told. When the current starts flowing through the line, you will have resistance and that current will also be responsible to the magnetic field, which gives rise to an inductance. As a result, these two parameters, that is resistance and inductance, are connected in series. And you have the other two components that are connected in shunt. Because between conductor 1 and conductor 2, there is a air which acts like a dielectric medium between the two. That gives rise to the capacitance. So as you saw a representation of how a transmission line is represented using line parameters, as you there was a resistance, inductance, capacitance, and shunt conductance. And this will be uniformly distributed along the line. And therefore, it is called so called as distributed parameters. Okay. Why are they called as distributed parameters? Because you need to consider its effect throughout the length of the line. That is the reason they are called as distributed parameters and its value will definitely impact the performance of the transmission line. The series impedance, since R and L are connected in series, the it gives rise to series impedance. That is Z is equal to R plus J omega L. And this shunt para parameters, that is capacitance and conductance, will give, give rise to shunt admittance. So let's start to know the individual components of a transmission line that is the individual parameter of a transmission line the first one over here is resistance of the line as you all know resistance of the transmission line is almost same as a because line is transmission line is also a conductor you have studied about different types of transmission line conductors uh, where an aluminium is the main component and that's been classified into different types of conductors and also you would have studied about high temperature conductors. The transmission line is also a conductor and there will obviously be a resistance over there. 
the ac resistance will play an important role in analyzing the performance of the transmission line and sometimes this resistance will also give rise to heat in the conductor and that heat will also cause sometimes cause sag but this resistance effect will be very much negligible so you it can be we can easily neglect or ignore the effect of resistance in analyzing the performance of the transmission line the resistance can be neglected because its effect is not that significant. But to know what would be the resistance, a DC resistance of the line can be used to know its value. What would be the resistance of the line? As you already know, and you come across an expression for resistance, a DC resistance, R is nothing but rho L by A. Whereas rho is resistivity, the conductor, L is length, and A is area of cross-section. As I already told, this flow of current will give rise to resistance and you get to and you the uh, outcome of the resistance over here concept of resistance as a parameter one of the important parameter for line uh, transmission line is you can neglect its effect because it's not that much significant moving on to the next one that is line conductance this line conductance arises be only because because when the current starts flowing through the line as i already told it creates a magnetic field a magnetic flux this flux will give rise to the line inductance you you know the the expression for inductance is nothing but flux linkages by current so flux linkage is nothing but number of turns that is n into the flux of the line so n into phi m divided by the current so lambda by i where lambda is regarded as flux linkage which is nothing but number of turns into maximum flux that is phi m so these two parameters you got to know how they got into the transmission line how what what led to the development of resistance and inductance in the line so what led to the development of capacitance and shunt conductance in the line as we as i already showed there were two conductors there were two conductors here so one uh, and two so you have uh, two conductors so this between the two conductors one and two where air acts as a dielectric medium this dielectric medium forms a capacitance between the conductors it can form a capacitance between conductor one or and two or between the conductor one and the ground okay the capacitance effect you may neglect the effect of capacitance if it's a very small line or a very short line and capacitance effect has to be considered for if the line lengths are greater than 80 kilometers as it, it is definitely necessary to take the effect of capacitance into consideration if for the line lengths greater than 80 kilometers so similarly on the application of voltage there exists a leakage current that will flow between the conductor and the ground so this leakage current representation is usually done by a shunt conductance g okay when you apply a voltage, there will be a current. What current over here? It's a leakage current that flows between the conductors. It can flow between conductor one and two or, be or between the conductor one and ground. So this is represented as shunt conductance. So now let's move on to the first one. As I already told, the, our learning objective was you will be know, able to know the importance of line parameters and how would they affect the performance of the transmission line. And as the values of R, L, C, and G changes, the effect on the line will also change. Okay, as, the, as these line parameters vary, its effect will also vary. And that is the reason one, much, one should give more importance in analyzing these parameters. The second one was, how did we represent a line? I, I, as I explained already, uh, representation of a single phase transmission line the next one objective was determination of inductance of a conductor of a homogeneous solid conductor so we'll start with that so this slide will tell you what is leading to the development of inductance in the conductor as a current carrying conductor when a current starts flowing through a conductor it produces the flux and these flux are concentric in nature these are concentric flux lines around the conductor we'll just see the diagram in the next slide if, the, if this current starts varying with respect to time, obviously, the rate of change of flux will induce an EMF in the circuit. And that will also be responsible for the production of inductance in the circuit. 
So as already told, inductance can be defined as ratio of magnetic flux linkage divided by current. L is equal to lambda by I, where lambda is nothing but flux linkage, which is nothing but number of turns into flux. And when determining the inductance of a line, it's very important to give prominence to these following factors. One should give utmost importance or these factors has to be considered in determining the values of inductance in a line or in a conductor. These factors are nothing but magnetic field intensity, magnetic field density and flux linkage. In other words, if you want to know the inductance of a line, you should start with flux linkage, flux linkage followed by flux density or field density that is followed by field intensity. So I repeat, so in, in any line, if you want to know the inductance, first you should know the flux linkage. After that, you should know the flux dens uh, density and then you should know the field intensity. Okay, this is the flow. And these pa parameters are ultimately, these factors are totally important in deciding the value of an inductance of the line. So let's start with determination of inductance in a homogeneous or a solid infinite long conductor. So this is the conductor, a okay, current is flowing through the conductor. As I said, you can just see the concentric circles. So these concentric circles are nothing but the flux lines. Okay, they are nothing but the flux line. There's in figure two, if you just see a figure, figure two over here. So in figure two, you can see small r. Small r is nothing but the radius of the conductor, complete conductor. You also have small x here, small x. That is nothing but the radius of some part of the conductor. Okay, you're taking some part of the conductor. And you can also see a length dx and chain that is dx and one more is d phi and hx. What is it? So here to find out this current i, whatever that you're seeing, it is the current that is flowing to the complete conductor. But for the sake of analysis, we are just considering some part of the conductor and that radius of that part of the conductor is x whereas the radius of the complete conductor is r. Okay, you will also consider a small area between the two and that is between conductor x and the other part. So that is nothing but dx. And out of the complete part, you will be interested to know the magnetic field intensity h of some part that is d5, small part, the small length part, small part. That, that part is shaded over here, that part is shaded. So wherever you see hx, ix is nothing but, hx is nothing but the magnetic field intensity of smaller part of the conductor that you have considered with radius x. And ix is the current that is flowing through the smaller part of the conductor. This is a smaller part of the conductor. This part is a complete conductor. And this i is the total current that is flowing through the conductor. And ix is nothing but the current that is flowing through the small part of the conductor that is with radius x. So with this explanation of the figure that is projected here that is a solid infinitely long conductor derivation would be easier as already told here it is uni it's a norm it's made up of non-magnetic material and the current is assumed to be uniformly distributed throughout the conductor so you are it gives rise to internal and external magnetic field lines uh, uh, in the form of concentric circles so and this is mainly that the direction of these whatever field lines that was mentioned in the diagram it is mainly because of Fleming's right hand rule okay so when determining when if you want to find out the inductance of this particular conductor first you are supposed to consider the internal flux linkages or flux lines and second case you need to consider the external flux lines. so you get two different expressions one expression pertaining to the internal flux, uh, magnetic flux, and the second one is due to inductance due to external flux. So we'll start with the internal magnetic flux. So this is a, you need to consider a long straight conductor, homogeneous solid conductor, as I've already explained the diagram. It's the same diagram. I'll just repeat it uh, with a radius R, which is current, which is carrying a current I. Okay, this is R over here is the radius of the conductor and the current is flowing through that. And when the current starts flowing, 
there will be a magnetic field. So this magnetic field will give rise to flux lines inside the conductor and the flux line that is produced inside the conductor will contribute to induced voltage and inductance because the rate of change of flux will give will induce an emf and that will later contribute to the inductance the value of inductance due to internal flux is given by the ratio of flux linkages to current generally general expression of inductance is lambda divided by i okay and now we will move on to the next one that is the magneto magnetomotive force that is mmf is the ampere turns around any closed path is equal to the current in amperes enclosed by that path thus we have what is this mmf is equal to the current of the closed path it's you can imagine a closed integral okay over here you have flux h and ds what is this ds it's the part that you have considered in the conductor this part is that this part is that okay whatever the small part that you have taken is nothing but ds so you are interested to know the magnetomotive force which is equal to current i is nothing but the flux in that particular area in order to highlight that particular area here you have used ds that area is defined as ds so it's mmf of that closed path whatever that you have considered into the field intensity of that path h is nothing but the field intensity and the unit of magnetic field intensity is ampere turns per meter okay okay close to mmf is ampere turns around any closed path that is nothing but phi h and the closed path is ds which is equal to the current I. okay let the magnetic field intensity at a point x meter from the center of the conductor be hx as already told so you have two uh, in single conductor you are dividing it with radius one with radius r inside that there is one more conductor wherein you have assumed with a distance x from the center of the conductor and we are interested to know the current over there and also the magnetic field intensity over there thus integration of ds around the closed circular path is nothing but 2 pi x okay that particular path is what it's 2 pi x so phi into ds is nothing but 2 pi x because it's a circular path 2 pi into its radius as field intensity is constant so hx into 2 pi x is nothing but the current in that path you all we, we already saw the expression mmf in a closed circular path is, not, is equal to the current okay so what is x we are interested in knowing the magnetic field intensity and the current of the conductor with radius x not with r x denotes the radius of the inside conductor whatever that we have considered therefore magnetic field intensity is nothing but h ix divided by 2 pi x we will consider it as equation 1. Since the current density is uniform, current density is uniform. So you have you are able to find two part over here. You will, you will assume that the current is uniform. What do you mean by uniform? Why you should assume it as uniform? You are, you are able to see the two equations here. One is Ix divided by pi x square and I divided by pi r square. What is this Ix? Ix is the current of the circular conductor that is inside divided by its path is pi x square and i is nothing but the current of the conductor with radius r divided by its path that is pi r square so you can clearly denote you have x and r here x denotes one conductor r denotes other conductor and both are inside okay the main conductor is with radius r inside that you we have assumed a one more conductor which are which we are interested of and that conductor radius is x so therefore ix current of the inside conductor whatever that we are interested in will get simplified later as x square divided by r square into i therefore what will be the magnetic field intensity so substituting equation 2 in equation 1 what will you get what is the value of field intensity of a conductor with radius x it's nothing but the expression that is 1 by 2 pi x into x square divided by r square into i therefore this is the 
expression that is field intensity is nothing but x divided by 2 pi r square into i ampere turns per meter the flux density at a given point is nothing but bx you know the expression for flux density b is nothing but mu into hx what is the value of hx here it's nothing but x divided by 2 pi r square into i you know the value of mu that is nothing but mu naught into mu r the value of mu naught is 4 into 10 power minus 7 henry per meter so what is this internal flux linkage value so it's nothing but mu naught mu r i divided by i as you substitute the value the expression gets further simplified as half into 10 power minus 7 i you know that now we found out the values of flux linkage due to internal internal flux linkage what is inductance due to internal flux linkage is nothing but flux linkage is divided by current so the expression for inductance due to internal flux linkages is 10 to the power of minus 7 divided by 2 henry per meter so to just summarize expression inductance due to internal flux you should know the, you should calculate initially the value of hx of a per conductor x and later when you start simplifying it you will get to know the flux linkages of that particular conductor x and thereby use the flux linkage and find out the value of inductance we'll move on to the next one if you have a knowledge of the previous derivation this will obviously be easy so that is inductance of a conductor due to external flux so here you are supposed to consider the flux linkages of an isolated conductor due to the portion of external flux you are considering see conductor over here you can see the conductor over here so these concentric part whatever that is shown that will denote the external flux linkages so you have to consider that these points p1 and p2 are at distances d1 p1 d1 so p1 is at a distance of d1 from the center of the conductor P2 is at a distance of D2 from the center of the conductor. Even in, be in between that, you have seen they have taken a small part. For the sake of analysis, for the sake of derivation, a small part dx is considered. Okay, the differential part, that is dx, a small part in between that for the sake of analysis. Consider a tubular element that is considered as x meters from the center of the conductor. This is again like how we considered x over there. Here also we are considering x for the sake of analysis the field intensity here also we are interested in field intensity hx the um, mmf around the element is 2 pi into hx is equal to i as i already told why 2 pi you need to consider the one complete path that's 2 pi x into hx which is equal to i the flux density bx at this point is given as you know flux density is nothing but b is nothing but mu into h y x because you're considering it as an x meter from the center of the conductor so that is nothing but you know mu and hx what is the value of hx hx is nothing but i divided by 2 pi x as already mentioned it is 2 pi x the expression over here is 2 pi x into hx the flux d phi in tubular element is given by you've considered why it is d phi you've just considered a small part in the tubular element whatever in the diagram that was shown so that is nothing but flux density into the distance the distance that is considered is only dx as shown and we are assuming that it's at one meter axial length is considered as one meter so therefore change in flux in that particular area the meaning of d phi and dx is dx was the path that was considered here so whatever the flux that will be present in this part will also be will also be d phi that denotes that there is change in dx is change in d5 it will also be responsible for change in d5 that's nothing but mu i divided by 2 pi x the flux linkage is d5 per meter is equal to d5 d psi per meter is equal to d5 since external flux link external flux to the conductor links all its current that are present in the conductor as a result the total flux linkages between because you have considered two points d1 uh, with a distance for a point p1 and p2 is at a distance of d2 therefore in order to find out d psi you are supposed to integrate 
the flux linkage considering these two the distances d1 and d2 so therefore flux linkage is nothing but integral of d1 and d2 with respect to mu i 2 pi x into dx so as you start simplifying it okay as you start simplifying it you are removing mu i uh, 2 pi i would say and you have integral of uh, dx by x with respect to limits d1 and d2 so this gets simplified as mu i divided by 2 pi into ln d2 by d1 the simple maths that you can easily un understand this okay so relative permeability is considered as mu r which is nothing which is equal to one so you know flux linkage there was flux due to internal but over here psi denotes flux linkage there was was just phi, psi internal here it is psi between the two points d1 and d2 that's nothing but as derived mu naught i divided by 2 pi ln d2 by d1 you're substituting the value of mu naught 4 into 10 power minus 7 into i divided by 2 pi ln d2 by d1 so this will give rise to an expression that is 2 into 10 power minus 7 i ln d2 by d1 so here you should have pi it's missing here you need to consider 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 i divided by 2 pi into ln d2 by d1 so psi 1 to with respect to kind of points 1 and 2 is nothing but 2 into 10 power minus 7 i ln d2 by d1 the inductance due to flux induced between points p1 and p2 is nothing but 2 into 10 power minus 7 ln d2 by t1 entry per meter so if you understood flux linkages due to internal flux external flux will is exactly the same but the only difference is you will be finding the flux linkage between two points d1 and the points p1 and p2 with the distance d1 and d2 that's the only difference between internal flux linkage derivation and external flux linkage derivation thank you